Okay, hi there. Here's a short video looking at some key reasons, key motivations for business growth. So what are those motivations for trying to grow a business? I think there are basically six that I would focus on. The first is economies of scale. So economies of scale come from a business expanding in the long run. And as they grow their capacity, the scale of their operations, in theory, that leads to a reduction in long run average cost. Cost per units go down. This can help firms make higher profit margins at a given market price. So commas of scale, a first key motive. Second one is to build market power, the market power motivation. Firms may want to grow their market dominance because that gives them more pricing power. It can make their demand curve, for example, less price elastic. This power can also be used as a barrier to entry in the long run to, to protect against potential competition. And bigger businesses, scaled businesses, can also build and then take advantage of monopsony power in both product and labour markets. Crucial motivation for growth is to improve shareholder returns. Shareholder returns come from a share of the profits, that's known as dividends, and also an increase in the share price. And the stock valuation of a listed company is influenced by expectations of future sales and profits. The other aim of business growth is to make the business less vulnerable to a hostile takeover bid. Bigger businesses are able, better able to, to do that. Managerial objectives, also very important. Big businesses typically have different layers of management. And managers whose objectives are perhaps tied more to the growth of a business rather than narrow profitability, well, they may want, they may want to target rapid expansion of the business. Synergy effects are where if you can diversify a business across different products and markets, if you can grow some new revenue streams, that again helps to reduce the risk for investors. So those are the, these are some of the key motivations for business growth. A really good example of a fast growing business globally is the taxi app, the ride sharing app, Uber. And you can see here the number of active users has grown dramatically from 50 million in 2016 to well over 110 million forecast by 2019. And the number of rides that Uber has given worldwide again has grown from 2.1 billion in 2016 forecast over 6 billion rides in 2019. However, Uber is a loss making business. Uh, the gross bookings, of course, have been surging. Nearly 50 billion worth of value of revenue of gross bookings in 2018. That's, that was up 15 billion in 2018 alone. However, the business is making a loss. They have to pay 40 billion to drivers and restaurants. And then they've got their own operating costs, including insurance, uh, sales and marketing costs, research and development spending, operating the app infrastructure, etc. So in other words, Uber in 2018, despite having grown very quickly, made an operating loss of $3 billion and a cumulative loss of nearly $12 billion since 2014. That loss, by the way, is much bigger than Amazon when it was growing very rapidly as well. So Uber is now listing or hoping to seek a listing on the stock market. It's going to be one of the big IPOs of 2019. It's going to be huge news. The question is whether the share price will reflect those losses. One of the big potentials for Uber, of course, is to diversify. So Uber Eat and Uber Freight could be really important for this business as it grows going forward. Uber thinks that its Uber Eat app addresses a, a market globally in excess of $800 billion per year. And so far, Uber Eats has only got 1% of that market. Their sales were just about $8 billion in 2018. Well, they've developed a network, a scale business of more than 220,000 restaurants in over 500 cities. And it'd be really interesting to see whether Uber Eats and Uber Freight will be the diversification uh, which will allow Uber to move more quickly towards profitability. So keep in mind, there are lots and lots of reasons why businesses grow. Choose two or three businesses that you're particularly interested in. If you like, become mini experts on them and then you can use those as context in your economics exams.